why are you seeing a rattlesnake on Thanksgiving? I thought they were hibernating. Hi, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> I just barely got a turkey on the smoker and that means I had some time to kill. And right away, one of my neighbors has a rattlesnake on their front step. So I'm gonna go grab that so that they can have people over and not have to worry about their rattlesnake denning there. So you might be thinking, like a lot of people, and I saw certainly in the Facebook thread that this was posted, um, you know, why are, why are you seeing a rattlesnake on Thanksgiving? I thought they were hibernating. And as we discussed in another video, I'll put it in the comments, uh, they are hibernating. This is just what hibernation looks like. It doesn't look like what a lot of people think it does, where the, an animal just goes down and, and just sleeps for six months, like we, we are taught or learn or think we learn that bears do that. Uh, in the winter, but no animals do that. Hibernation is a very complex series of behaviors, and sometimes that means on the right day, like today, a snake might come out, sit around. Doesn't mean it's not hibernating, it's just out. So I'm gonna be catching that snake, but more importantly, uh, I'm gonna be trying to figure out where that snake is using for its winter den, because sometimes there's other snakes there, and it gives the homeowner an opportunity to, after the snake is gone, they can fix that situation so that they don't have to have rattlesnakes show up at the front door next year. That's a big snake. Hi. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, he's... Already got him. Yep. <laughs> the picture helps. You saw these uh, pumpkins here. So he's probably been here for a little while. That's the the fun part. So I'm going to look around and make sure he's by himself first. Is this newly gone? Yes. Okay. So that's mystery solved. <laughs> that's great because that's the second half of this is making sure you don't get one next year. And you did that. You did that already. <laughs> so that's probably what it was. Is it? When did you remove that? Was it? A few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. Okay. So it might have shown up, expecting it to be there, mm -hmm. and then it's not there, and then it's camping because oh, so that's a this is winter home. Is what yeah, you're yeah. <laughs> but a big snake like that, um, just keep an eye out because sometimes they're not alone. So a snake that big, it. it he knows exactly where it's going. It's like, yeah. it doesn't do anything like maybe a baby snake would use this or something, but mm -hmm. that guy, but if that's all, you know, was it Lantana? Uh, or just... I don't remember what it was called. But some real was, bushy thing. Yeah, green bushy bush, bush, purple flower. Yeah. Lantana, yeah. We get more snakes out of Lantana than any... Really? Anything, because it, it gets really dense and then there's leaf litter under it and that's mm -hmm. a big mess, you know? So... All the animals love it. We have some yeah. twillings. There too. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, I mean it's like it's like grocery store for, for wildlife. Okay. You know? Alright, that was easy. That actually worked out perfectly. It was better than expected. Um, so when we show up at something like this, like I was just saying, we're looking for why the snake is there so that it's not a repeat thing. But in this case, why the snake is there is also the reason that the snake was in the by the front door. There's a big overgrown lantana there apparently and uh, they removed it. So when they removed it, the snake that was using that as its winter den had no place else to go and ended up by the front door. So we're looking for a replacement site. Um, we're not gonna find a big overgrown patch of lantana here in the desert, but we can find the next best thing, which is a big deep pack rat nest or a big pile of rocks that goes deep enough. We're not in an area that historically has a lot of rock though. So I've seen some rocks in the distance here. I'm gonna go over there and see if I can find something that could be a suitable replacement den for this snake. It's like a really good situation. It's an old uh, flood control berm that has a big gap under the concrete. And I'm sure other things are using this. This is really ideal. Uh, I'm gonna put it here, I'll show you. So spots like this, this, there's a cave essentially that goes way, way down in there. And you can get out of the sun and it's, it's perfect. Actually the largest rattlesnake dens that we are called to 
or often artificial structures like this that have been kind of repurposed by the wildlife in the area. So it'll just come out. As soon as it sees that it can escape, it's gonna bolt. <laughs> there we go, it can see it. There it goes, watch. Just like that. Out of here. So I'm just walking back and I noticed that Marissa sent me a message and there's another rattlesnake here in Cape Creek. So I'm gonna drive over there and get that one. I'm actually just kind of right back in the other side of the same development. Same gate code. So I guess this is the spot. <laughs> this development is the place for snakes today. Sometimes that's also not an accident. Sometimes just methods of development of the location can make a neighborhood more snake prone um, than others. The way they do erosion control, um, the way they do drainage in and around the property, the way they manage their drainage parks and how they water things. Uh, even things like the landscape requirements that an HOA might have can all affect how likely it is for any particular neighborhood to get um, to get more or less rattlesnakes. So on the I want rattlesnakes at my house scale, this community is uh, five stars. <laughs> They're doing it all. So this one over here, it was freaking me out. I never had one back here, 15 really? years. Wow. Never had one in my backyard and I opened the gate. Well, this one was on the other side. It's it's back in the corner there. Okay. I opened the gate and uh -huh. the thing was there and struck at me. Yeah. And I have wire on the gate, uh, like rodent wire. Yeah, yeah, I saw and that. And it struck and I jumped back and I'm like, oh my God, it was huge. It's a good sized snake. So, and I, I look back, it's definitely back. There was at least one. I see it. So I'm gonna let you do your thing. Yeah, I see him. I just want to make sure I don't. See another one at the same time. You think that's the same one? The one you showed me in the video was a female. This is a female. Okay, we're here. A lot of this stuff is real easy to get to right now, which I appreciate. So just like last time, we need to find replacement conditions that are just as good as wherever this animal had been spending the winter. Uh, we cannot just dump it out into the grass here and hope for the best. The animal would then be wandering around trying to find better conditions because it's nice and warm right now, but it is getting chilly at night still, and it's just not the way to do it. So I know a place up here, again, this is, really near my house, so I know this area really well. And as a result, I know exactly where to put a snake like this for winter. So we're going to a place that uh, is a, a historic construction <laughs> debris site. Uh, by historic, I mean sometime in the past, it's no longer active, we don't have to worry about anybody being hurt or anything, and no one's coming out here, but there's just big piles of rocks out here, and uh, it's a pretty big rattlesnake den as a result. And this snake is within uh, within proximity enough to where it very well may have stayed here at some point in the past or even uh, would have done so in the future anyway. So I'll take it down here, find a good hole going into this stuff and release this snake and then get out of here. And this is just perfect. This is very similar actually to the spot that we just released that other snake. Uh, where there's a big concrete dump here that is got some cracks and gaps under it and just perfect for the winter. Here we go. Not the biggest diamondback in the world, but and there's a nice gap right there. As soon as she sees it, she's gonna go right into it. Come on, let's go. 
Try to escape. Uh -oh. There's a hole right there. See it? There it is. There you go. Stay away from houses. Doesn't always end up good like this. So it's very tempting to stay here and continue looking for snakes, but I do have a turkey to attend to back home, so I'm gonna wrap it up and head home and uh, get into that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you like this sweatshirt that I'm wearing, it is available in one of the links also. Finally, time of year that we can use something like this. But happy Thanksgiving, and uh, thanks for watching.